nervous system is divided into four divisions. The central nervous system, peripheral nervous system, autonomic nervous system, and the enteric nervous system. The central nervous system is the brain and the spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system is the nerves emerging from, that is the, the, the dorsal root ganglia and the nerves. So this, that forms the peripheral nervous system. Autonomic nervous system is the uh, sympathetic and the parasympathetic divisions. The enteric nervous system is a different entity altogether and it is uh, uh, in the visceral, especially the intestinal or uh, gastrointestinal viscera or visceral components of the enteric nervous system that comprises. Now, just uh, an outline of these things, the, the ba basic functions of the central nervous system, we all know about it. It is the perception and processing of sensory stimuli. That's a very broad and uh, performing or executing the voluntary actions. That is the somatic, that is the muscle contractions. And uh, that is the voluntary muscle contractions. Regulation of the uh, homeostatic mechanisms, especially the visceral uh, homeostasis uh, in, involves the autonomic nervous system, hypothalamus and the limbic system. In addition, there are some other things which are not mentioned here in this particular thing. That means the higher functions, the speech, the sleep, the brain uh, activity, and all those things. Then spinal cord has a sensory, the motor, and uh, autonomic three components or four components it has. The sensory components uh, receive the information, all the uh, somatic uh, information and the um, the motor part is the it, uh, it, uh, it gives a stimulus to the uh, alpha motor neurons or gamma motor neurons for the muscle contraction or maintenance of muscle tone so then we have the autonomic that means uh, the part of the in the spinal cord especially the sympathetic component uh, comes from the lateral horn that forms the greater autonomic uh, supply because this is the only part the sympathetic comes only from the spinal cord whereas the parasympathetic comes from the bro both the brain and the spinal cord so that means the sympathetic is only spinal cord thoracolumbar outflow that is one of those uh, lateral through the lateral horns that is one of those functions so then uh, uh, it has a reflex functions reflex functions uh, which are protective uh, and uh, corrective these are the reflexes the spinal cord performs. In the peripheral nervous system, we have the ganglia. We have two set of ganglia. One is a dorsal root ganglia, which is the cell body, cell body of the nerve fiber, the somatic nerve fiber, especially a sensory nerve fiber of the pseudo unipolar cell, uh, pseudo unipolar neuron. So now that is the uh, ganglion cell, that is the cell body. Then we have a paravertebral chain of uh, ganglia, that is the autonomic ganglia, especially these are sympathetic. These are sympathetic. So that means uh, here, in case of sympathetic, they relay visceral motor responses and uh, all the autonomic functions. Okay, that is about a ganglia. And from this ganglia, you have the sensory and motor fibers emerging and uh, uh, somatic and autonomic one aspect about the autonomic nerves autonomic nerves they they emerge through these um, because uh, preganglionic fibers are um, myelinated thinly myelinated thinly myelinated postganglionic fibers are uh, uh, non myelinated so that means we have the uh, gray gray rame communicants and uh, the white ramay communicants. Uh, and these white ramay, uh, some of them, they travel some in through the some nerves along with the somatic nerves. In case of certain organs, especially here, if you are thinking about a brain, how the brain or the brain structures receive the, the sympathetic uh, inputs, the blood vessels of the brain, because the nosomatic nerve goes that side. So in that way, it goes along with the blood vessels. 
that is uh, that means uh, the autonomic nerves uh, they em emerge with the uh, carotid artery and along with the carotid artery the plexus uh, reaches uh, uh, to the distant uh, sites like that or even to the distant sites in the uh, lower extremities then we have the enteric nervous system here in this enteric nervous system uh, it's uh, located in the entire digestive system uh, it is uh, by itself it is independent uh, however it is modulated by the autonomic nervous system uh, maybe sometimes a sympathetic dominance or sometimes a parasympathetic dominance so that that is how the enteric nervous system is uh, been operative next uh, these are the parts of the cns i have made the parts of the cns from uh, caudal to cranial so from the tail to the head tail to the head the caudal to the cranium the caudal you start with the uh, spinal cord the sacral lumbar thoracic and uh, cervical segments that is uh, the spinal cord so then that is that is forming the central nervous system then comes the one which is this is a medulla because after the spinal cord this is a medulla and then the medulla then that is forming the pons and from the pons uh, uh, you have the midbrain midbrain and then we have the uh, the diencephalon that is the uh, interbrain then we have the uh, the cerebrum so that means we have spinal cord medulla pons cerebellum comes as a hind brain rides both the medulla and uh, the pons the cerebellum so this is cerebellum here as a part of the uh, hind brain or on the posterior side or on the dorsal side so these are the uh, structures of the uh, are the parts of the central nervous system uh, which we we want to be familiar i just acquaint the students uh, these parts uh, again what are the parts of the brain are called because uh, we get the terminologies in our in our textbooks what is called a, a prosencephalon mesencephalon rhombencephalon we get those terminologies so a student may be perplexed uh, with uh, this uh, type of terminologies that is why i i, I clarify those te these terminologies the four brain so that means the four brain mid brain hind brain these are the three parts of the brain the brain is having three parts the four brain is a prosencephalon encephalon is the term used for brain the prosencephalon then mid brain is a mesencephalon and hind brain is a rhombencephalon now this is what uh, you we have here and uh, looking going it further the these are the the parts of the prosencephalon the prosencephalon is divided into telencephalon and diencephalon because some of the books uh, sometimes we use a terminologies and um, uh, this controls the telencephalonic structures so that are the students gets perplexed what is this telencephalonic uh, structures so now if you are looking at that uh, the telencephalonic structures are uh, the cerebral cortex the entire um, cerebral uh, mantle and the basal ganglia basal ganglia somewhere here this is corpus callosum and uh, limbic system all these structures are telencephalic structures so then in between brains uh, in between brains we have a diencephalon that is also a part of the four brain this diencephalon uh, centers around the thalamus so that means uh, thalamus hypothalamus hypothalamus epithalamus and subthalamus all these structures are uh, diencephalonic uh, structures so these uh, uh, telencephalon and diencephalon they form the four brain structures then comes uh, the midbrain uh midbrain if you are looking at this uh, this is the forebrain structure this is a diencephalon there and uh, this is a pons this is a pons and you have a pons and the diencephalon you have this area that is a very small area that is a midbrain this is a midbrain and uh, this is the thalamus these are the two thalamic nuclei and in this is a pineal gland and uh, this is a superior colliculus and here below this uh, sub, uh, subthalamic area so you have the structures uh, above the, this is pons so 
below the thalamus and above the pons. This is the midbrain. So now this midbrain has uh, three major parts. The colliculi, that is the superior colliculi and inferior colliculi. So this is a, a superior colliculi on either side and inferior colliculi on either side. A tectum. A tectum is just a, a structure uh, below the inferior colliculi. And uh, usually, uh, most of the time, we, we just mention, uh, mention about uh, uh, spinotectal, spinotectal uh, fibers or uh, the ascending tracts, uh, spinotectal tracts. Maybe you, you may, they actually, they are coming to colliculi. They are spinocolliculi, uh, sp uh, colliculus, because the colliculus uh, uh, controls all of our uh, eye, eye movements. So spinotectal or spinocollicular, they go as a synonymous. So tectum is this structure. The tegmentum, tegmentin is between the, uh, below the tectum, below the tectum or below the inferior colliculus and the above the pons is the tegmentum. These are the structures of the midbrain, and uh, the the differences between the tegmentum and the tectum are very uh, difficult uh, for the functionality point of view. So that is uh, anatomically okay. We can identify these things separately. The functionally, they have a common uh, things, especially whatever is happening from whatever the various. Uh, uh, the auditory, visual, somatosensory, reticular, uh, all those fibers are uh, uh, mixed here in this uh, particular area. That's about the parts of the uh, midbrain, mesen cephalon. Mesen means uh, middle midbrain. Then rhomben cephalon is a hindbrain. And in this hindbrain, uh, we have uh, two structures, meten cephalon and myelin cephalon. Uh, meten cephalon is a cerebellum and pons. Cerebellum, meten, this is one part, and this is pons. The meten cephalon. And the myelin cephalon is a middle oblongata. Middle oblongata. So that is uh, the hindbrain uh, parts. Okay. So now uh, I have made, because uh, why I, I just uh, clear these things uh, to all students, because uh, uh, many books use these terminologies. Uh, let these terminologies be clear. Uh, they can go back and refer and uh, then just uh, try to uh, try to be familiar with uh, these things. Of course, uh, most of these things are uh, anatomical, uh, but still we need to know them. So this is uh, about the various areas of the brain. Then moving on, the other terms used in the central nervous system. We often use the term uh, uh, rostral and caudal, or dorsal and ventral. Now, let us see here in this animal. This is a, a rat. A rostral is a, a nose, or tip of the nose, rostral. The caudal is the tail. Rostral and caudal, you can see this uh, red line, red horizontal line. Now, in this rat, if you are looking at the rat, I will come to the human beings uh, next. So this is the dorsal surface. This is the dorsal surface and this is the ventral surface. And uh, for us, uh, because even when we are taking the brain like this, this is the brain. And uh, if we are taking the brain, this part, the superior part, superior part is the dorsal part. And inferior part, so the inferior which comes here in the uh, just above the, uh, the the nasal nasal part, so this is inferior or the ventral. So this is a dorsal, and when if I take up the brain, and uh, this is ventral and this is dorsal. So then again, this uh, frontal we just say it is frontal. Uh, rather, uh, the another terminology, suppose if this person is lying down here, the nose is coming here, and that is a rostrum. So this is a, a terminology is always uh, not very particular with these things. This is a rostral that is going to the nose or the glabella. And uh, the back to the occipital is a caudal, rostral and caudal. So that means I have made in the brain, this is a brain here, and uh, this is a rostral structure. And this is a caudal structure. Okay, there is one more uh, point here. If if I am looking at the 
midbrain and the structures below the midbrain. So now this is the midbrain here or the diencephalon. This is a rostral part of the continuation of the extension. So the tail is the corner. So that means we have even if you are taking about the cerebral mass, cerebral mass frontal is rostral and occipital is caudal if you are taking the cerebral hemispheres. And if you are taking at the, uh, the extensions uh, like the midbrain down to the, the spinal cord, the low sacral segment is caudal and uh, the uh, pawns of the uh, midbrain or rostral structures. That is the another terminology. We, because when we describe or uh, whenever, uh, whenever in hypothalamus, hypothalamus, these problems arise. Whenever we are trying to discuss about various hypothalamic uh, uh, nuclei, they mention that it is rostrally situated or it is cardially situated or it is ventrally situated. So these aspects come up for that reason. I am trying to put up these uh, anatomical uh, landmarks. In the spinal cord, it is much easier. So this is a dorsal or posterior. And uh, this side is ventral or anterior. There is no, uh, there is no uh, dif difficulty here in case of a... Uh, but uh, if you are looking at this here, this is dorsal here, this is ventral here. If you, if you are superior and inferior, dorsal or this thing. Suppose you are trying to describe some of the nuclei of the hypothalamus. You have a dorsal nuclei. Dorsal nuclei means it is superior. And the ventral nuclei, it is inferior in that hypothalamic uh, structure. So for that reason, uh, this uh, particular uh, understanding this diagram becomes uh, important. Now, uh, coming back here. So already I described about this. Now I have taken up the section B1 here. Uh, this one, I have taken it from Kendall's uh, textbook of neuroscience. So this B1 section, this section, if you are looking at that, uh, this is the section this along the coronal uh, side. That is, It is a coronal section. So that means you have cut the brain like this. You have cut the brain in this arrow. So then when you do that, you have uh, such a type of uh, area coming up. This is a coronal section of the uh, cerebral cortex. Now, how, how we look at, so we look at uh, this top one is a dorsal. This is a dorsal and this is a ventral. And uh, this one, the, this is a medial because it's the midline, almost in the midline, or you can use the word midline also. The medial, paramedial means uh, away, drifting away from the midline, the paramedian on either side. Then lateral, lateral is uh, if you are if they are here, but in reference to the midline, whenever you, this structure, this structure is lateral to this. It's a relative. Uh, the medial and lateral are relative terms. They they just try to uh, talk about here. If you are looking at that, uh, you, these are thalamic nuclei, and if these two thalamic nuclei, I got to say that uh, they are uh, lateral to this uh, ventricle. Third ventricle or whatever the ventricle. So like that. Or if you are looking at this, uh, um, the basal ganglia structures of the the putamen and the globus pallidus, uh, uh, they, you look at that. This is lateral to the lateral to the thalamus. So like that, you can describe uh, uh, the various things. In case of a spinal cord, I have just taken the spinal cord section here. In this spinal cord section, we have a uh, dorsal side, uh, dorsal side here, and the ventral side here. Okay, that is uh, one aspect. Uh, the another interesting feature of the uh, the brain and the spinal cord. You see, all these areas are the gray matter. This is a gray matter. These areas are the gray matter of the nuclei, uh, nuclei or the neurons. In case of the spinal cord, the gray matter is in the center. In case of the cerebral cortex, it is uh, outside, periphery. They are laterally situated. Whereas in case of the uh, cerebral cortex, the white matter is inside because the neurons are here and the uh, fibers emerge. This is the uh, nerve fibers. They emerge here. This is a white matter. Whereas in case of the spinal cord, if this is these are the fibers coming and fibers ascend up. The fibers come here, relay in the gray matter, and then ascend up as a bundle. 
So this is a white matter. So that is the uh, difference. This is the dorsal side and this is the ventral side. Now coming back here, another uh, other terms uh, regarding the section planes. We have a horizontal section that is uh, if you are going in the this direction, cutting through the eyes, cutting through the eyes uh, entero posteriorly. So that is a horizontal section or cutting through the both the uh, in this uh, coronal side. That is the uh, I just use the auditory meatus as this thing, uh, and if you are cutting through that, uh, that is a coronal section. The societal section making uh, separately two halves. That is societal section. Now, how that looks like? Uh, so let us see how that looks like. Uh, this is a horizontal section. So that the head is cut horizontally. So you just see that this is the section, and this becomes important when the uh, when we try to see the CT scans or MRI scans. Uh, we have all these planes. Uh, um, become relevant uh, to us. So now this is how the brain area looks like if it is a horizontal section. So that means uh, you have uh, the uh, peripheral uh, gray matter there and then we have the, the ventricles, then uh, thalamus and all other uh, uh, structures around. So that is uh, one part. Uh, this is the horizontal section. The coronal section we have seen Maybe that previous one, this is a coronal section. You can just see that uh, uh, this is a central uh, sulcus there. And then uh, we have the lateral uh, lateral sulcus or uh, this thing. You can just uh, see the all the features uh, typically bilaterally uh, located. Now, this is, uh, this is about a coronal section. And societal section, when you are cutting through the half, you see the brain like this. So this uh, these are the uh, cortical structures. This is the entire, this is the uh, area of the cerebrum. Then uh, the inside the cerebrum, we have, uh, this is a cingulate gyrus. The green one is a cingulate gyrus. And then you can visualize all those uh, limbic uh, structures uh, very clearly. So this is a societal section, and uh, you can see the cerebellum, various folia, uh, they are emerging out. So that is uh, the societal section. So I have summarized the various parts of the brain, the forebrain, midbrain, and hindbrain. And I have um, clarified the terminologies dorsal and ventral, rostral and caudal the coronal, horizontal, and societal sections. And again, I clarified about what are these four brain structures mean. So four brain, prosencephalon, telencephalon, diencephalon. So this is a thalamic structures. This is cerebrum, basal ganglia. Uh, then the midbrain, the, the, uh, especially uh, the colliculi, the tegmentum, and the tectum. And hindbrain or the uh, meat and cephalon, the cerebellum and the pons, the myelin cephalon is a medulla. So this is what uh, I have uh, just introduced you uh, to the terminologies of the uh, and the uh, various parts of the brain. Okay. Uh, mostly I have uh, referred uh, these uh, candles, uh, uh, textbook of neuroscience. That uh, you visit the my uh, YouTube link uh, so that you will get a lot of information. Uh, you can just uh, hit uh, Sripad Deshpande in YouTube.